Welcome to my kitchen. I am about to show you how to make a flour substitute or a baking mix to use with um, low carb and low fat baked goods so that you can um, make breads and cookies and uh, other baked goods that would be desserts. And this is a um, flour substitute that can't be used one-to-one -one for flour, but it can be used one-to-one -one for the Trim Healthy Mama baking blend that is used in a whole slew of recipes. Uh, the, the baked goods that are in what, five cookbooks? And I'll show you the cookbooks, but also in plenty of recipes that are available, public facing recipes online. And I'm going to show you a Google sheet document that I created that is filled with public facing recipes. And one of the recipes on there is this fabulous flour baking mix created by Laura Slope, a friend of mine. And I just wanna feature her recipe and show you how easy it is to put it together. The chart on the screen isn't clickable, but it will be accessible in the description box. And from the description box, you can use the link to get to the document and then you'll be able to use it on your computer, your iPad, you'll be able to, you know, blow it up and make it large for your eyes. Um, it will not work as a print out document because it would end up so tiny that you'd have to read it with a magnifying glass, but at least you can, um, you can open it on your computer iPad and then make it large, however large you need it to read. But because it's available electronically, all the highlighted links on there, they are clickable. You can click on them and it'll take you right to the, the resource that is listed in each box. So there's loads of recipes that are all public facing on this Google Sheet that I'm providing to you. I've got my stuff collected and I'm gonna point the camera over here so that you can watch me put together Laura Sloat's fabulous flour baking mix. I pulled out the things that I'm gonna need. This is a quart size baggie that I'm using here. If I used a larger size baggie, these arms lift up nicely, but I don't need to raise them up. They'll stay here and I'm gonna be putting my ingredients into here. And I'm going to uh, rest this on top because this will help me um, sift the ingredients. What I need to start with is a cup of oat fiber. And I will link all of the ingredients in the description box so you can see what I'm using specifically. Um, oat fiber. It will keep this from being, actually this doesn't need to be sifted through. Let me move this and it's the other ingredients that have to be sifted in. This oat fiber is nice and fluffy and doesn't have any lumps in it. So I'm using a cup. This is two half cup measures here. So that was the oat fiber. I think I said it will be linked in the description box. The next thing I need is some coconut flour and that I do want to sift in. I need three tablespoons. My lid is broken and cracked, but I like the shape of the container. I keep refilling the container from other brands of coconut flour I buy. I need three tablespoons to go in here. Two. Three, okay, so that ingredient is there. Set that aside. And 
so this doesn't get weighed down. I'll just kind of encourage this through, breaking up any lumps. I suppose another way I could do it is to put it in the Vitamix and blend all the dried ingredients together, but I uh, don't think I am going to do that. All right, and then the next thing will be three tablespoons of ground golden flax seeds. So I buy my golden flax seed in bulk from Sprouts, but I will have it linked online so you can see where you could get some if you don't have a Sprouts near you. And I know that this two tablespoon measure will grind up into three tablespoons of ground flax seed. It expands once it's ground. Um, the reason I grind it fresh is because the omega-3s in this flax seed are, are fragile and they go rancid quickly. And I'm going to show you a little grinder that I use to grind this up in. So my grinder is over, <laughs> I'm directionally challenged, right there, right there. And um, I'll put up on the screen an uh, easier image of the grinder for you to see. The thing I love about it is the removable chamber. So I just dump my flax seed into here and pop it back in the grinder and whiz it up. freshly ground flax. So I'll dump that into here. Actually, I don't, I don't need to sift it through. It's not lumpy or clumpy. But now all I have to do is just wash this chamber out quickly. I'm gonna give it a rinse. Okay, all cleaned out, and I'm gonna let it sit over here to dry out. And the next thing I'm gonna add is I'm gonna be adding almond flour. So this is my container out of the freezer of almond flour and it is lumpy and it is a mixture of kind of the pure white almond flour and some almond flour that had the skins ground into it. So I mixed the two together to try to lighten up the one that had the skins with it, but it's what was available at the time. So I need two tablespoons of almond flour and it does need to be sifted in. So I will just work that through with the spoon so it doesn't have the lumpy pieces in my flour mixture once I get done. Okay, that should be good enough. Okay. All right, just one more ingredient and we're gonna have a flour mixture put together. So the next thing I need to use is a half a teaspoon of glucomannan. And I will put an image up on the screen to show you what um, the benefits of glucomannan are. It is a root that is basically all fiber, but it's great gut fiber, really good for the insides. So I'm gonna get down my glucky container. And in here, I have a one teaspoon measure and a quarter teaspoon measure. And I'm just gonna do two quarter teaspoon measures. I'm putting it into the baggie down below that you don't see on screen right now. And that is glucomannan. We, I call it Glucky because of the Trim Healthy Mama nickname for glucomannan, Glucky. Okay, that's all we need to put it together and I'll point the camera back down on it. All right, so this is the Laura Sloat's fabulous flour baking mix that she created and it works as a one-to-one -one substitute actually for the Trim Healthy Mama baking mix. I probably should have left some air in here. Let me let some air back in. And then I'm just gonna shake it up nicely to mix everything. And I will show you.
some cookbook covers in just a second. This baking, this flour substitute mixture, while it is not a one-to-one -one flour substitute, it works as a one-to-one -one substitute. Let me let the air out now. For the Trim Healthy Mama Baking Blend. And this is the start of being able to make our bread. So I'm gonna clarify again that this Laura Sloat's Fabulous Flour Baking Mix is not equivalent one-to-one -to, -one to white flour. You can't use it that way. This is much more absorbent, a much thirstier flour, but it is an equivalent. It can be used as a substitute equivalent, measure for measure, with the for the Trim Healthy Mama baking blend flour substitute mixture. I said I was gonna show you some cookbooks that it could be used with, and I'll point the camera back down to show you a stack of cookbooks. So these cookbooks will have recipes in them with the Trim Healthy Mama baking blend that you can use Laura Sloat's fabulous flour baking mix in as a substitute for that baking blend. Now this very first one here that Serena and Pearl self-published, it doesn't have the baking blend mixture in it because that hadn't come out yet, but it does have glucomannan in it and it does have stevia, but that's about the only special ingredients, special ingredients that you wouldn't have for me that you would have to worry about not having access to. So that's this cookbook. And then later on, they um, worked with a publisher and they came up with this Trim Healthy Mama cookbook. And this is where the baking blend first appears in some of the baked good recipes. But now I've shown you how to make Laura's fabulous flour baking mix. Same goes for this Trim Healthy Mama table book. And another book that the sisters published with someone. And then there are two more cookbooks that the uh, family members published. We have the, um, the sister's niece, Rashida. She created this Trim Healthy Future cookbook. There are a lot of great recipes in here that do use the baking blend. And then uh, Serene's daughter-in-law um, published this Trim Healthy Indulgence, and it's indulgent because it's all desserts in here. Just, uh, and beautiful visuals, lots of recipe pictures, and kind of step-by-step -step stuff. So those are options if you want, if you're a cookbook person and you want to have them, but not to worry. I put up that sheet at the beginning, I showed an image of my Google Sheets document that I created that has all kinds of public facing recipes linked on it. So if you use the link in the description box, it will give you access to my Google Sheets document. And um, Laura Sloat's fabulous flour baking mix is one of the recipes on there. See, I've been working off my iPad, reading Laura's recipe for her fabulous flour. Uh, and there's other baking mixes here, but I just enlarged it so I could read it. And I was working off from there as I was putting it together. I will point the camera to my iPad screen and show you step-by-step -step how to access that Google Sheet and then how to find a recipe on there to be able to make a low carb, low fat, gluten-free, dairy-free bread recipe. So when you can see the link in the description box of the YouTube video, you can click it and that will open up the document for you. And then you can enlarge it and there is 
the recipe that I was working on for Laura Sloat's fabulous flour baking mix, fuel pull. And now I'm gonna make this smaller and move over here so I can see. So there's breakfast, lunch, dinner, recipes, and there's seven across, and this is almost four down. Um, this one is snacks and desserts, Show, uh, sippers, drinks, and shakes, fuel pulled dressings and sauces. That's very helpful for making salads that don't have a lot of fat or carbs to them. So they're low um, fuel salad dressings. And then down here, breads. So breads, low carb, low fat sandwich rolls, wonderful buns and dinner rolls, the um, substitute that Laura Slope made that works for the no carb easy bread mix, uh, Wonder Wraps, and I put in here YouTube video links so you can see something like Wonder Wraps being made. But what I'm going for is this New Queen's Awesome Bread video. There's a bit video and there's a link to the recipe on the Trim Healthy Mama website. And so I'm gonna click on that and view, view links. No, I wanna open the link. Okay, this takes me to the Trim Healthy Mama webpage. Now, this is called Nuke Queen's Awesome Bread Mix because you can make it in the microwave. I don't like to do that. <laughs> There's a video link back the other um, where I was that you can watch the sisters um, have their squabble over the microwave. Anyway, this is, I'm gonna make this bigger. I'll move it over here. It doesn't wanna go over that far. Okay, so this is the recipe that I'm going to use to make my sandwich buns, and I'm gonna bake them. When Pearl and Serene first shared this recipe, I, um, I did, experiment with it in the microwave to see what it was like, but I just, I don't like microwaved food and I really didn't like the texture. So I baked it as a loaf and I'm putting up on the screen a picture of one of the first things that I was so very happy to have this recipe for, eggs and toast. And it thrilled me to be able to sop up the runny yolk with the piece of bread that I had made using this recipe. But with time, I have settled into just making it as sandwich buns because they're more useful to me um, and because the sliced bread tends to be a little bit fragile and it frustrates me if I have a, a broken slice of bread to mess with. So the sandwich buns are the best way for me to go and that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. So we have our baking blend flour mixture, our Laura's fabulous flour mixture, and we're gonna use this and the recipe that's on the iPad. And I've got my oven heated up, so we're just gonna throw this together. And my, my pans have been sitting out here. There's actually two of them here, one, two. And this will make sandwich buns for me. I'll put up an image on the screen of the recipe that this was first published, the new queen bread, but it can be baked and I prefer to bake it as sandwich buns and that's what this demonstration is all about. But you can see the recipe on the screen and now all I need to do is get my ingredients. So I need the baking blend, which I have, and um, I need to get egg whites, salt, and some baking powder. It does call for a little sweetener, calls for a sweetener called, um, what did I see on the screen? I see super sweet, but you can use um, any preferred sweetener. So there's the egg whites. Um, I've got the baking blend. Um, I need salt and the baking powder. So salt and baking powder. All right, I've got the ingredients. 
And now I will point the camera down so you can see this being thrown together. All right, I need to put in a cup and a half of Laura's Fabulous Flour. So I'm just gonna scoop in here. Obviously you could make as much of this flour mixture as you wanted. I just made one small batch. So there is a cup and a half of a cup. I will have a little bit left over out of this single batch I made. Okay, so see, I don't have much left from that initial batch, but I can certainly double, triple, quadruple that batch so I had more baking blend in the future, or her fabulous flour if I want in the future. Now I'm gonna put in my other dry ingredients. Um, it calls for a quarter teaspoon of mineral salt, so I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. That should be about a quarter teaspoon. And it also calls for a tablespoon of baking powder. So I'll dump that in. And the other dry ingredient would be the super sweet. Now I don't have super sweet, so I'm going to use what I have. I have, um, I have stevia. I keep stevia in this little canning jar and I have in here a small teeny tiny little donk spoon which is 1 32nd of a teaspoon that thing is 1 32nd of a teaspoon and this is an eighth of a teaspoon this actually will hold three donks now a I'm looking at the recipe and it says a half a teaspoon is super sweet that's probably the equivalent of a teaspoon and a half of sweetener and so I'm just going to calculate that that would be two donks of stevia. Stevia is about the cheapest sweetening option that I could use. And I don't need a lot of bulk for this baking mix. If I needed more bulk, I would use allulose. So I'm just going to that, stir that together a little bit. And now all I need to do is add in my water and I'm just going to bring this over here for the six tablespoons of water. Sorry, I'm out of your, I'm out of your sight here. I'll just tip the camera so you can see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six tablespoons of water. You're off kilter. Let's see if I can straighten you out a little bit. And two cups of egg whites and it says carton or fresh well carton is the simplest to do so let's throw that in and that's done and then whisk it up so i've got in here i'm just making sure baking baking blend and i'm using fabulous flour from laura slope water egg whites mineral salt a sweetener and the baking powder so this is just going to be stirred together with a whisk. And it is mixed. All right. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in my baking pans, my uh, muffin top baking pan. So let me move things out of the way a minute. So this one batch of the bread recipe will fill these 12 wells. And I'll show you that, but I'm going to spray these quickly with a little bit of baking spray. I figured you didn't need to see that on camera that you are capable of doing that without a demonstration. And I'm gonna gather up the batter and I'm just gonna to have to estimate to fill each well with about the same amount of batter and I may use my hands to spread it out evenly after I get it divided up amongst the 12 wells. And this will work out well for hamburger buns um, and all kinds of sandwiches, like a fluffernutter. Uh, I'm gonna be doing that. But um, 
And sometimes you can divide these in half if you don't want it thick like a hamburger bun. So you could use one of these um, buns for a sandwich. Um, it works with all kinds of things. Anything you could use a, a bun for, you can use these for. So I think, let me just, I'm eyeballing, trying to see some evenness here. Make sure it's even before I pat them out. This looks like it's a little bit more. Okay. Move these around just a little bit. If I wanted to be very precise, I suppose I could use a kitchen scale, but I'm not that precise. And now this is a very wet batter and not sticky, so I can just use my fingers to pat it out evenly. And then it will get popped in the oven. Now I can sprinkle some sesame seeds on top if I would like so that it has a little nicer look to it, especially if I were using them for hamburger buns. Um, and I'm thinking while I'm doing this, whether or not I wanna leave these plain or whether I want to add sesame seeds to them or not. I think I'll just leave these plain without the sesame seeds. And that one feels like it's a little fuller than the rest. This one felt a little scant over here too, which has more. So just move things around. Okay, let's make sure this one has enough. This one still seems like it has a little bit more than the rest. Okay, so I think it's pretty evenly divided and now these are gonna go in the oven and I will have sandwich buns. Oh, another great usage that I like to use these for. I'll bring the camera up just a second. So in addition to using these as hamburger buns, sandwich buns, fluffernutter buns, um, I love to use these as garlic buns, garlic rounds. And I make, uh, I mash together some softened butter and some roasted garlic, or if I don't have much time, I'll just use garlic powder, salt, maybe dress it up with a little dried parsley or fresh parsley or basil or whatever, and we can have garlic bread that is not damaging to our waistline. So these buns are very, very useful. If this were baking as bread, uh, it needs to be baked in a small loaf, uh, like an eight, uh, eight inch by four inch, nine inch by five inch Pyrex loaf pan. Um, and if you were microwaving it, it says 10 minutes. And it says if it's in the oven, 350 for 45 minutes. But um, I find the fastest, most useful way for me is these buns. So these are going in the oven now. Put them over here. They fit side by side in my oven very nicely. I will link these muffin top pans. Uh, I've got to set the timer here. Whoops, it's set on 350, so the timer. I'm guessing it's probably gonna take 15 minutes or at least I'll check it in 15 minutes. So that's started. Sorry, I went off camera there for a minute. So we'll wait 15 minutes and then I'll, sh or however long it takes for them to bake, and then I'll show them to you. I almost forgot to show you. I am taking the buns out of the oven. I've taken one pan out. And so here's the next one to come out. Okay. And I touched them to make sure that they were Done. They're firmly baked and I just need to let them cool off now. I'm so happy. Now I have sandwich buns. So kudos to Laura Slope for her ability to come up with a mixture that would stand in for the Trim Healthy Mama baking blend one for one. Not for flour, but for the Trim Healthy Mama baking blend. And in the description box, there will be all kinds of information about um, why I think it's best 
to start from a fuel pull perspective and build out your meal from there. So you're starting from the idea of having protein and nutrients, and if you need the energy from carbs or fats, you decide that as part of building your meal. But um, the focus would be protein and nutrients. That's what that Google Sheet is all about.